fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. We've got to hurry. The Lone Ranger, riding between two mining towns in the Black Hills, saw a square of cardboard fastened to a tree. He hurried toward it with Tonto close behind. Steady, Silver. Steady, Silver. Look at that, Tonto. Uh, That reward notice. We saw another one of those at the edge of that last town. And there's a $10,000 reward for the capture of that man, dead or alive. And um, that's not good. They describe me. Masked man, light hat, white horse called Silver. The reward is offered by the Drexel Syndicate. Drexel know what you do. No doubt of that. You must have heard how we are trying to interfere with his operation in this part of the country. Maybe you make too much trouble for Drexel. Uh, not as much as I'd like to. Perhaps these notices are a good sign, Tonto. Drexel wouldn't be willing to spend $10,000 unless we were in his way. That's right. But plenty of people know Lone Ranger and plenty of people good friends. Drexel has thought of that. The small type here at the bottom of the notice, he explains that the real Lone Ranger's in Texas. He says that I'm really a crook posing as a Lone Ranger. But you got ring on finger. Only real Lone Ranger wear that. If anyone gets a chance to shoot, they won't stop to look at a ring. Uh, maybe you hide for time, huh? Hide? That's what Drexel would like. Well, we won't hide. We'll keep after his agents who are trying to buy up all the gold mines. But wait, Kimasabi. Well, maybe it'd be good thing for plenty feller. Plenty men maybe want to sell gold mine, get cash. Drexel isn't fair, Tonto. He doesn't pay a tenth of the amount the mines are worth. Furthermore, it would be a bad thing for one firm to control the industry. Bad? Yes. America's founded on free enterprise. If all gold mines are operated by one man, the miners would have to take whatever pay was offered. There'd be no competition. Drexel would be able to name his own terms for every piece of machinery he bought. Every railroad he used, every man who worked for him. Uh, that's right. Yes, he'd be too powerful. It's not American to give one man too much power. He'd make slaves of the people he hired. And Tonto, there shall be no more slavery. Uh, and we go on to next town, huh? Not tonight. We'll find a place to make camp and go into town in the morning. The horses need rest and it'll soon be dark. <laughs> It's dark early at this time of the year, Potter. Surprised to see you ride up, Beasley. I thought your evening time was spent in Pharaoh's gambling place. Business, Potter. That's what brought me here. I don't see why. I told you last time I didn't want to sell a Nancy Jane. But I keep my gold mine and work it. You're using poor judgment, Potter. The 
Drexel Syndicate is getting pretty powerful in this part of the country. They're not powerful enough to tell me what I'll do. And I might add that Mr. Drexel has indicated his displeasure at the salaries you pay your men. Oh, he don't like it, eh? He'd sooner I'd starve him like he does. Well, I won't. And there's another thing, Potter. You might find it difficult to get railroad facilities to ship your ore. Why should I? Well, Mr. Drexel is in a position to contract for all the facilities that are available. Now, it uh, wouldn't be easy for you to ship gold without railroads, would it? Beasley, I won't sell, and that's that. Now, go on to Pharaoh Jim and play your poker. No, no, wait, Potter. There's another thing. Well? Suppose you had a... Uh, a cave-in and needed a lot of heavy machinery to reopen your mine. I suppose I'd have trouble getting that machinery. Well, that uh, might be the case. Well, I won't have a cave-in. My shafts and tunnels are built right. I don't risk the lives of my men like Drexel does. You never can tell, Potter. What if someone had a grudge against you? There's a lot of blasting powder around here and a lot of men who know how to use it. That's enough, Beasley. I've heard about enough of your threats and hints and suggestions... You'll find the men out here don't scare easy. Now get. Very well, Potter. If you change your mind, let me know. We buy gold property in any condition, <laughs> even uh, caved in mine. I said get. You can reach me at Pharaoh Jim's. Get up there. <laughs> Eddie, there, Silver, old fella. The saddle off in a minute and rub down for you. Oh, uh, look yonder, Kimasabi. Me see light in next town. Oh, I see, Tano. That means that any fire we might build would serve as a beacon. Well, we'll do without a hot meal tonight. Uh, I often look. Look, look there, you see? A red flare in the sky. Tano, is that Wait, a signal? Wait, listen. You hear it? That blast. An explosion and a big one. An explosion like that means trouble. And trouble in the Black Hills generally means Drexel. Not up, Tonto. We're riding tonight. Steady, Scout. Take your cinch tight. Uh, be an easy trail through these hills at night. Steady there, Silver. Steady, boy. Steady, fella. Ready, Tonto? Uh, me ready. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. There's the mine. The whole mouth is caved in. Easily warn me to only fool Katie. Threaten me. Well, I'll gun the scheme and crook. Hey, Potter, look there. Mayor. There's 10,000 reward for that man. Stand back. That'll break for it. Right. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Did you get hit, Tonto? No. Tell him to shoot too fast. Bullet go wild. Good. We can't let that sort of thing go on, Kimasabi. There's too much to be done, and we've got to be free to move. And what we do? Train up. Easy, boy. Oh, easy now. Move, easy. Tonto. That's it. Tonto, I've got to go back to that town. I've got to use a disguise. Here, help me unroll my pack and get out the old clothes. Ah. Uh. Time to fix it. We've not only got to fight men who blow up gold mines, but we've got to show these people that the real Lone Rangers in the Black Hills are not in Texas. Vern Gardner was one of the few mine owners who would have welcomed the chance to sell out. He was tired, discouraged, and broke. Both Vern and his wife, Sarah, showed signs of hunger as they sat on the veranda of their house in creaking rocking chairs. I'm sorry for Potter. I reckon he'll be as hard up as we are now. After the explosion last night, I don't suppose he'll be able to give you the job he promised. He won't. I asked. Well, this is the end then, Vern. I don't know what's to come of us now. Uh, look, there's another newcomer hidden here. Uh, the poor critter, I suppose he figures to make a strike and a fortune. He's looking here. Likely hoping for food. Hello there. Hiya, Pilgrim. Use your water Help yourself. It's about all we got to offer. Thanks. Who's the Drexel agent around here? Is that who you're looking for, the Drexel man? Yes. Name is Beasley. Has a room over Pharaoh Jim's place. I understand he's ready to pay for the capture of this man. Oh, you saw those notices, huh? Ten thousand dollars is what he'll pay. Just ten thousand, that's all. Nothing but a fortune. Maybe I can show him the man he's after. Well, go on and do it. And I hope you're choking the first food you buy with that dirty cash. What's that? I'm a man without a cent. The gold mine is one of the best around here. But for lack of a few hundred dollars, I can't operate till I hit the pay dirt. Can't borrow the cash. And I'm watching my wife go hungry. But I'd see Sarah starve to death before I'd take the Drexel cash for shooting the Lone Ranger. Oh? Uh, mind if I sit down for a minute? Go on and sit if you want to. I thought the real Lone Ranger was in Texas. Well, he's not. 
We've heard of things around here. And you can take it from me, the real Lone Ranger is back of him. He is? You're doggone right he is. If he'd come here, he'd find plenty of things that need cleaning up. And he's just the fight machine to do it. That's why the Drexel outfit have everyone around here ready to shoot him on sight. Well, for example... Uh... You mean what should be done? Yes. All right, take Potter. Before that agent Beasley came here, good minds like Potter's didn't get blowed to miss smithereens. Then they go around fighting one another. They helped each other. They weren't suspicious of everyone and his brother. Well, Beasley has changed all that. When he wants a mind, he finds a way to get it. When a man has a good mind like I've got, Beasley sees that he can't get cash to work it to the pay dirt. What will happen if you don't work your mind? Well, if there's no work on it for a certain time, I lose it. The ground can be staked all over again. Then Beasley gets it. I offered to sell out for $1,000. You know what Beasley did? He laughed at me. A thousand dollars? Mine that's worth a million. And he wouldn't pay me enough to take Sarah and me back east. No, sir, he'll wait. Get it for nothing. Does Beasley know what the land is worth? Sure he knows. That's his business at duty. Burn Gardner, you're letting your tongue wag too much. Uh, yes, maybe so. I'm sorry, stranger. Well, that's all right, Vern. It just riles me, that's all. Here I sit, hungry for lack of a couple of hundred dollars that'll make my claim pay off. I know the man that could make things right around here. Then you talk of shooting this man. Well, I can't hold it again. You. Plenty of other men in town would do the same. I'm going to call on Mr. Beasley and see if he really will pay as much as the reward notice says. I'm sure we can't offer you grub. Well, thanks, Vern. Thanks just the same. Maybe I'll see you again. Steady, big fella. Come on, boy. He's a nice-spoken gent, sir, eh? I, uh, I shouldn't have said what I did. I don't know about that, Vern. What do you mean? My pa used to raise horses, so I know him. What do you mean? That stranger's riding the best horse I ever saw. I wonder what he calls it. Before the Lone Ranger in disguise called on Beasley, he hurried out of town to meet Tonto. New plans were made based on things he had just learned. That evening, Tonto waited in the shadows behind the building while the Lone Ranger went inside Pharaoh Jim's cafe. He looked around for a minute then walked toward the back of the cafe where he spoke to a man who stood near the end of the bar. They call you Beasley, don't they? Yes. Why? Uh, better come to the back room. What I have to say is private. And what is it? Well, all right. Go first. Lawyer, what do you want? What do you know about this handbill? Is the reward on the level? That's what it says. Why? Well, uh, this line about the Lone Ranger really being in Texas. What if that's not true? What if this man isn't a fake? I'm authorized to pay the reward. What do you know about him? I know where he's camping. You do? I wouldn't want to stop a silver bullet from one of those guns he uses. If you want to know the location, I'll sell the information. Mm -hmm. How much? One thousand dollars. No reason why you can't get the reward for yourself. You scared? I think that Indian with him has been watching me. Well, tell me where the camp is. If the information leads to the capture, dead or alive, I'll pay the thousand. Five hundred now, the rest later. Three hundred now. That suit you? Yes, I'll take it. Let me see the cash. All right. Two, two fifty, three hundred. There's the cash. Hey, what's that? The lamp. Doc, get on the table quick. Shoot, shoot! Someone's here in this room. Came through the window. Do something, do something! Silver, you hear that? Silver, that horse. Beasley, they got away. Are, are you all right? Yes, did, did he knock you down too? Oh, that Indian, he... A candle here, I'll, I'll light it. The cash was on the table. It's gone. And a bullet in its place. A silver bullet. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Ten minutes have elapsed since the light in the rear room Pharaoh Jim's was shot out and Beasley's money taken from the table. Men who came to inquire about the noise and shooting were sent away. Another lamp was lighted, and Beasley spoke to the man across the table. I paid you the 300 It was on the table. It's your cash that was stolen. Oh, what about it? You promised to tell me where the Lone Ranger's camp was. Not much use now. What we said here was probably overheard. Camp will be moved. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's right. Well, where was it? Half a mile south of town in the woods at the bend in Durham Creek. I suppose it's just as you said. He'll move the camp now. You needn't complain. You're out just $300. I'd have had more than that if you'd captured the man you want. You uh, can still get that reward. Maybe I'll try for it. I'd like to meet that Indian that was here. Several days later, Beasley heard that Vern Gardner had men working at his mine. Heading there, he met Potter on the way. Keep going, Beasley. Go and see something that'll make you downright ailing. Is it true that Gardner's got men working at his tunnel? You don't go on right, it's true. None of the men you've got scared half to death loaned him the cash either. Well, how'd they get the money to go on with the job? It was left with him, $300. Left mysterious in the night with a silver bullet alongside it to show who it was from. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Hey, look yonder. There's poor old Vern's place. He's got the dirt a-flying now. He'll hit the pay dirt any day. Uh, and now he wouldn't sell you at any price. I don't know why you're laughing, Potter. Your own mind is caved in. I'll get it reopened. And there's another thing, Beasley. I know who's to blame for it being blown up. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah, so do you, you scheming crook. You hadn't better make any charges you can't prove, Potter. When I make charges, I'll prove them, and don't forget that. Hey, Vern! Hey there, Potter! Come and see how my tunnel's progressing. Doing first rate. Mr. Beasley is real interested now. Well, well, you couldn't buy half a foot of this land now, Beasley. Almost any day I'm going to hit the pay dirt. I haven't made any offer to buy your land. I'm just telling you to save you the trouble, that's all. Just wait till I hit pay dirt. You won't scare me from lending money to the men that need it. You weren't talking so loud a few days ago. <laughs> $300 won't last. It'll last long enough. You wait and see. Now, get off my property. Come on, Potter. Look it over. Yeah, I'd like to see it, Vern. There's not a man around here that's more deserving of a little good luck than you are. I'll show you the tunnel and the samples that make me sure we're almost to pay dirt. Then we'll go to the house and I'll show you a silver bullet. Uh, gotta do something about that mine. Gotta do something in a hurry. Can't take chances, either. Beasley turned his back on Gardner's tunnel and headed back to the center of town. While he walked, his mind ran over various ways to stop the work. He was so absorbed in thoughts that he didn't notice the man on the path ahead until he was quite close. Oh, oh, oh you again, huh? So you looked over the Gardner job? Yes. You uh, need work done there? Huh? I haven't got the last money you gave me. I still need cash. Oh. What do you know about uh, tunnels? Enough. Yes? I also know how to use blasting powder. Uh, what are you getting at? I don't think you'd find it easy to get someone to blast another tunnel for you. Why do you say that? The men have been pretty mad since Potter's explosion. I didn't have anything to do with that. That's the point, Beasley. If you had done it yourself, you'd have no problem. You could do the same to Gardner. But when it comes to hiring a job done... A different matter. You don't, uh, you don't seem to care what you do for cash, do you? Money has a loud voice. Did you learn anything new about the lone, the, uh, masked man that calls himself the Lone Ranger? I guess there's pretty good evidence that he's no imposter, isn't there? Oh, so you heard where Gardner got his cash. Oh, yes, I, uh, knew about it. I asked a question. I know the Lone Ranger's moved his camp. I found that out. Do you know where the new camp is? I want more cash than you'd pay for that information. I'll do better than 300 Not interested, Beasley. 500 No. The job I'm after is one that is worth a lot more. If you can get the Gardner property for nothing, you'd get something pretty nice now, uh, wouldn't you? Well? That mine should be worth millions. It's a mighty lot of money. What's it worth to you to have a blast there? One that, uh... One that'd fill up the tunnels? At least it would fill the mouth of the tunnel. 
Guaranteed? Oh, you needn't pay you're satisfied with the work. You come to my room. Maybe we can talk business. In the darkness of night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto worked with feverish haste, digging holes and packing them with blasting powder. Make a mistake in this, Tonto. It may do Vern Gardner more harm than good. Oh, that right. Now tamp this powder down. I've got the fuses in. Uh, when you... When you get cash from Beasley... Tonight, as soon as he's satisfied that the job is done the way he wants it. Uh, that good. We take big risk other time when you yell for silver out of window. Beasley would have been surprised to know that the man with him was the same one he thought he heard outside. Uh, <laughs> there, that'll do. I'm going to meet him near that pile of rocks. Uh, uh, you got all other plan made? Yes. Uh, it not like first plan. Why not, Tonto? What's the matter with our idea? Oh, there are plenty of risk. There's always risk, Tonto. Risk in everything worthwhile. The men who work these mines risk their lives and the lives of their families to get a foothold in these hills. That's right, but Tonto's still not like plan. I don't know of any other way to work things out. After all, we still have guns to fight our way clear, and Scout and Silver to carry us. Uh, Let's get to work now and finish getting the powder placed. Uh, Got a lot of work before midnight. Uh, <laughs> Couldn't have ridden here. It's hard walking at night. Horses would make a lot of noise, Beasley. Yeah, who'd hear it? Nearest house is Vern Gardner's, and it's a long way from his tunnel. There might be men there than we think. It's best to go on foot. You'll realize that uh, later on. Yeah. Oh, are you sure you've got enough powder in place? Yes. I'll take care of my end of the job. Just be sure about the money. Here we are. Here? Right. This pile of rocks will protect you when the blast goes off. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good thing people around here know that uh, know that I don't know how to use blasting powder, or I'd be blamed for this. Oh, you'll be blamed anyway. But as long as there's no proof against you, what do you care? Well, I don't. You got the cash with you, haven't you, Beasley? Of course. Moon's coming up now. You can see the entrance to the tunnel. Now, go on, go on. Get this over with. I don't want to see the entrance. I want it closed with tons of ore. You wait right here, then. I'll go and light the fuse. Ranger hurried to the tunnel and disappeared inside. He whispered tensely to Tonto. One minute, Tonto. Just let me get my own clothes on. It's good to get out of these old ones. Oh, uh, fuse ready to light. Just a second now. Uh, here, here, mask. Good. Now, uh, he's strapped gun belt in place. All right. I can't see a thing. Uh, there. And here, hat. You have the old clothes? Uh, me take them away. Put them in saddlebag. You'll take care of the horses, won't you? Uh, that right. Now, you can light those fuses, Kimosabe. I'll circle the rocks and speak to Beasley from behind his back. I'd assume he didn't see me in these clothes until he's handed over the cash. A match flamed against the fuse. There were sparks, then a fast sputtering as Tonto slipped quickly away. The Indian paused outside the tunnel, lighted a second fuse, and disappeared. A moment later, an ear-splitting blast rocked the earth. about it, Beasley? Are you satisfied? I sure am. <laughs> Gardner won't move that dirt for some time. Well, that's a better job than was done on Porter's tunnel. Stay off, then. I've got the cash right here. <clears throat> you did a first-class job. Glad to pay you. I should... I've changed my clothes since the last time you saw me, Beasley. Mast, you, the Lone Ranger, why you... Take it easy. The Lone Ranger, you hear that? Come, Come on, on boys. Hey, what's oh, this? We got you, Beasley. We got oh, you dead to rights. Gardner, Potter, coming. Get yes. doggone right. Where are... We was right behind those rocks. Heard every word it was said. Double cross. You tricked me. That's right, Beasley. You've been tricked. The thousand dollars you paid will go a long way toward repairing the damage to Gardner's tunnel. We got proof in your own statements, Beasley. That you're responsible for the blowing up of my tunnel, too. But wait, And I... you and your firm will have to make that good. He's right, Beasley. These men have evidence enough to jail you for life if they want to use it. They might dismiss their charges if you make good your damage. No, wait, wait, men. Wait, listen to me. It was this man, the Lone Ranger. Uh, that is, he calls himself the Lone Ranger. He blew up Gardner's tunnel. You hired him to do it. That's all we need to know. And you said he wasn't really the Lone Ranger. Why, you only... No, 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 wait, boys. Let me talk. Don't be too hard with me. I... I acted under orders. I'll do what I can to make good the damage. I... I'll pay. It's the truest thing you ever said, Beasley. Finally got the men riled up enough to stand against you and all your power. Your power smashed to smithereens, Beasley. And if you aren't convinced of that, we'll jail you, try you, and maybe hang you. There's one thing more. You... What about the reward? What? $10,000 for my capture. 
The Drexel Company's to pay that, isn't it? Oh, now, don't you? Here I am, Beasley, just as described on your handbills. Gardner, Potter, and their friends are turning me over to you, and they claim the reward. Uh, now, there's a limit to everything. That's right. I'm willing to open the mines. I'll, I'll repair the damage I'm charged with doing. I'll do that. And it's my cash that started Gardner back to work on his property. Oh, no, Beasley, that was my cash, remember? You gave it to me for information about the Lone Ranger's camp. This other money was paid me for firing a blast at Gardner's tunnel. You haven't spent any of your own cash or Drexel. I'll reopen the tunnel. And you'll pay the reward. You'll pay, we'll take it out of your head. Ten thousand dollars to wake up. Oh. You'll win. Bring up the horses, Tonner. Uh, me come. Well, Beasley, I'm your prisoner because you're paying the reward for my capture. Now, uh, what are you going to do with me? Do? With you? Yes. Are you going to order me jail? Well, I... I what a little different than you figured, isn't it? You didn't count on having me alive. Horse ready, Kimosabe. Wait, Tonto. Beasley is deciding what he's going to do with a prisoner that's cost him $10,000. Hurry up, Beasley. Make up your mind so we can go to your office and get our cash. Yeah. I'll pay the reward, but... But, men, put down your guns. I'll... I'll drop any... Any charges against this masked man. Please, please, mister, go away. Go away before you think of something else. Ready, Silver. <laughs> Ready, Tonto? Uh, you ready. If I hear any more bad reports about you, Beasley, I'll be back. And you won't need handbills to bring me. Come on, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Get him up, Scout. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 